I remember it used to be, it was a small town. Yeah. Population of what, three, four thousand to, to start off with. And then the downtown used to have just a few stores, the theater, um, Walsin, Lotus Garden mm-hmm. later on, um, the Chieftain and Squamish hotels. And I can't remember the, the Chinese store that they used to go to. Oh, uh, uh, Andrew's yeah, supermarket. Uh, this supermarket. little supermarket. You used to get everything on the cuff there. We were one of the first to go to the public schools. In elementary school, we, I had to sort of fight my way through. And um, right at the start of going to high school, because we had to catch a bus to go to go to um, to the house on secondary. And like I said before, the people got picked up at Britannia Beach, and um, the people lived in uh, wood fiber. They came over on a ferry, then they caught the bus to go to House Sound, and it stopped right in front of our, our reserve. And um, I used to have a really hard time trying to find a place to sit down, and if I did sit down, I usually sat down with the girls, but if I tried to sit down with guys, the guys would just shun you and get mad at you and push you off the seat, and you know, so end up standing up. This happened a couple of times, and so I wouldn't catch a bus anymore. I just like wait for the bus to come, then I'd ran. I ran along the tracks, and then it just got it became a game after like I'm going to beat this bus to school. So this is where I I got to be a sort of a fast runner because I was really good in uh, running and I was good in track and field. The Squamish Nation Peacekeeper Program, uh, we actually developed this back in 1989 and there was actually seven of us that sat down and said um, there's way too many things happening on the reserves uh, that weren't healthy for the younger generation. So we started to sit and uh, meet and discuss how we can um, try to prevent some of the stuff that are happening. We're talking about drugs and alcohol. And uh, bootlegging was one of the big things on. We uh, looked at um, how we can help as well as um, assist uh, the our local our police detachment. So through the years, of developing this with our local detachment, we also expanded ourselves to help the fire department, the paramedics, search and rescue, um, school districts. Uh, so we we've uh, really expanded ourselves on on helping pretty well everybody that needed help. Halakton Queenschnell. Halakton is my ancestral name. I was born, raised in Squamish. <clears throat> I am the son of er, the late Ernie Harry, and my mother's still around, Gwen Harry. And uh, I have getting interviewed here in Capilano right now, and that's my mother's side of the family. So the Baker family, we're all Squamish here. <clears throat> my father carried a name, Bacalton, which is a chief's name from Seymour Creek. And I was. Uh, I have a lot of good memories being in Squamish, but what brought me down here is the art world, and this is where I make my living down here. I've been inspired in the art world ever since I was five years old. My older brother, he was in grade seven around that time, and I saw his artwork and said, wow, I want to be able to do that. And then I started to draw and do art, and I don't, I have never stopped. And this year I'm 50 years old, so I've been in the art, doing art for 45 years. You know, I ended up going to art school. Emily Carr, which is now going to become a university, and I went to Capilano. And I have the opportunity now to do some artwork for them. I'm going to be carving them a mace. And the mace is a ceremonial item that they use in their ceremonies for graduation. It's a carved mace where the chancellor carries it. So I have those two things I'm up to, going to Scotland for three and a half weeks and carved 28 totem poles over there. 
<clears throat> and we played around with the idea that it's no longer Scotland. It's now called Scottmish. Scottmish Territories. It's a new territory. Now we got totem poles all over Scotland. But we just have fun. We, we just uh, play around with that idea. I'm now also doing a piece here in West Vancouver. I did another major piece in West Van Ambleside Park and I'm just, uh, when I get back from Scotland, the wood will be ready. I'll be working on a 24 foot piece for their new community center, which is recycled wood. We're using their old cedar wood that used to be part of their roof. It's getting laminated and it'll be a nice long piece of a double headed serpent. My, my wife asked me to put a shirt on it's the designs I did for the Van Ock, and uh, it's a Thunderbird, and we have stories up in Squamish. The Thunderbird and is uh, like around Black Tusk, and you know it's all leading towards the Sea to Sky Highway for the 2010 Olympics for there, and and also the Coast Salish design to represent the Lower Mainland, which all ties in with the four host nations. <clears throat> That'll be. Uh, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish and Lillooet. And uh, we're all part of that group and where the 2010 Olympics will take place. And I had did the designs for the merchandise and for the licensees for a Huston's Bay Company and whoever else picks it up. This design I did in relation to my now wife when we were getting together, we I designed it to uh, represent Valentine's Day, so I drew it up as a Valentine's card. <laughs> yeah, in a heart shape. So I have lots happening in the art world, and and uh, you know, being up Squamish, I learned a lot with the, my teachers, and I learned a lot from. Uh, family members, community members, uh, just even people come to visit, you know, I, I just picked up a lot of things and just learned on the way. And I learned a lot through trial and error also. I mean, I had a tough life at the beginning when once I became this real heavy duty alcoholic, but now I'm sobered up for like 23 years now. And it's been uh, nothing but good now. And uh, I learned a lot from our old stories, tie it in so that I could look at my own life and how I can change and go in another direction in life and and uh, healing and growth and human unity, spirituality. My name is Randall Wayne Lewis. My father gave me an ancestral name, Hukhokhtan. Some of them talked and I'm trying to figure what it is. He gave it to me before he passed away. There's a family picture. Um, myself and the uh, and wife Alva when we got married by the JP, Justice of the Peace. Our mother knew, um, wanted us to be proud as indigenous peoples. She made us headbands. And she made this headband for me, I'll show it to you. Uh, when I was about 15 years old, 16 years old, in this headband, we have the, the Thunderbird. And we have the doves, we have Squamish on this, the sea wolf, eagles, chikai, and the thunderbird again. And my mother made this for me when I was about 16 or 17 years old, and we wear it for ceremonies. It was originally a hat band for me that I wore, and we wear it in ceremonies proudly. When I work for the Squamish Nation, Environmental Lands and Resources, uh, and negotiations and development, and uh, 
uh, for the Squamish Nation uh, with the forestry, fisheries, independent power projects for the nation and work and negotiate with federal provincial governments. I guess what's important to us um, in our watersheds is, you know, from the headwaters, the glaciers, uh, down to the main stem of the rivers and the tributaries that run to the main stem of the rivers, like the Squamish River, for a main example, as a main stem. And then up there we have uh, Shovel Nose, High Falls, uh, Sims, Ashloo, Jockamish, Manquam, Stuamish. I know some small tributaries that run to there. Those are the main watersheds where, and also the valley cliff was a very important area for a lot of important habitat. My grandfather, Jacob Louis, uh, seen in his lifetime uh, the disappearance of the salmon and the wildlife in the lower mainland. Uh, my father seen that, and we up here, uh, because of um, the prosperity of, of others that came into our territories, was our demise of uh, sustenance, things that um, sustained us for thousands of years. In those days, the waters were not polluted. You could drink the water while you were trouting or if you were in there swimming. You could drink the water. And when the salmon came up that creek, the stomach, the coho and the springs, you couldn't see the bottom of the creek. And they were just black with salmon. And all the animals that lived around us, the forest, even the swo'o used to come down, steal our dogs and stamish. That's how we were. We were so close to the animals here in, in, in our Skokomish territory. Every year we have a celebration uh, of our veterans and honoring them uh, for their great efforts and deeds and sacrifice they did and giving their lives for the war. And, and here we're celebrating um, our, our elders of the past. And this is an opening ceremony of a walk that we did um, with our, our elders and our community members and other First Nations and, and, and non-natives where our community come assist us in the celebration of songs, dance, and our other First Nations drummers that we have here. Um, drumming and singing in the, uh, to honor those ones who've honored us for their sacrifice. Uh, two brothers, Edwin and Alfred Cook, born in Lord Bay. And they went over and they were under the commandos. Uh, they went into Holland and they, uh, the Germans were waiting for them. They, they, they kind of thought that somebody already knew they were going to go in. They were set up for them and they were cut down. They buried them in uh, in Holland, so they they're the ones that was really the heroes of Holland. So they kept all their their dead there, and they looked after them. And they when they kept them, they sent they sent his uh, his uh, medals. That's all they sent, and the picture of the grave. So he's still there today. And a lot of our native or our shoulders are buried over there. 